This is the first lesson in the functions unit. Um, so we're going to start by looking at what is a relation and a function and how are they different. Um, so a relation is really just a relationship between two items. So if you remember in grade 9 and 10, grade 9 we did a lot of relations in terms of linear. Um, so you created uh, a scatter plot for some data, you made a line of best fit, you probably found the equation, and these are an example of a relation. Um, in grade 10 you did quadratics, um, where the y value is dependent on the x value being squared. Same thing, you did some scatter plots, probably did a line of best fit, found the equation, and so on. So a relationship is any two variables that have a relation to each other. So foot length and height, how much money you make by selling ice cream cones, etc. So we can re represent uh, relations in a variety of ways. Generally, the ways we uh, express them is ordered pairs, um, table of values, which really is just ordered pairs but organized into a table. Uh, we might plot those ordered pairs and make a graph, and then we might look at the pattern and create an equation. So these are all different ways of um, representing relations. Um, if you look at all the first elements in the relation, that is called the domain. So that is your x values. If you look at all the second elements in relation, that is called the range, and that is all your y values. So we'll look at that in a bit more detail in the next lesson, um, but that's just a little bit of vocabulary there. So here's an example of a relationship. We have the distance from a storm. So this is my independent value or my x value and time between the flash of lightning. So the x value is time. This is my independent variable. And then distance is my y, and that is dependent on time elapsed. That is my dependent variable. So we can organize this information in a table. We can put it in a set of ordered pairs. We can then plot these points. So if I was putting this in a set of ordered pairs, Um, I might label it, um, let's just call it distance, so we'll use D for the set. We usually use curly brackets to organize our set of ordered pairs, and then each set is in a set of round brackets. So the first x value is 1, and this y value is 330. The next pair is 2 and 660. The next pair is 3 and 990, and so on. So we could s organize our data in a set of ordered pairs. We could put that set of ordered pairs in a table of values. We could plot that relation on a grid. And we would label the x value as time in seconds. And we would label the y value as distance in, I think it's meters. And then we could put some scales on this. All right, you always want to label your axes so we know what it is representing. Um, on my y-axis, I would probably go up to maybe 2000 because the biggest number is 1980. Um, and then I would divide that up accordingly. Maybe I might go by hundreds. One, two, three. No, maybe two hundreds. And so each of these um, increments are by 200, and I would just plot the points. So for example, let's use a different color here. Uh, the first point is 1, 3, 30, so I'd go right 1, and I'd go up to approximately here. The next point is 2, 6, 60, which is approximately here. So you, with graphs, it's always a little bit um, less accurate because I'm estimating where to put these points. Um, 3 is 990, so it's uh, approximately here, and so on. And then I'd look to see if there's some sort of pattern. Maybe it's linear, maybe it's exponential, and that's something that you could determine.
So these are just examples of way to represent uh, relations, ordered pairs, table of values, graphs, and then I would have to determine an equation from those points. A function is a specific type of relation. So a function is a set of ordered pairs for which every x value only has one y value. Um, so it should be noted that all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. So functions are a specific type of relation. They have to have this criteria um, that every x value only has one y value. So how do you know if it's a function or not? Well, let's look at the different ways we looked at relations, ordered pairs or table of values. For every x, we have to have a different y. So basically, with ordered pairs and tables of values, you want to make sure that x does not repeat. Right? Because if x repeats, that means there's a different y value for that value of x. So when I look at the x values, I have 2, 4, 7, and 8. None of those x's repeat, so each x has a different y. So this one is a function. In this order pairs, I see that x repeats. So when x, so it's not a function, because when x equals 1, it has two values for y. So there's more than one y value when x is 1. So this is not a function. If I have a graph, it's very easy. We use what we call the vertical line test. And the vertical line test means if I draw a vertical line anywhere through this graph, I will only cross at one spot. I won't cross the graph more than once. So this linear function is a function. This graph is not a function because when I do the vertical line test, I pass through more than one point. So this is not a function. And this is um, kind of a stretched circle, which is called an ellipse. So graph is easy to tell whether it's a function or not because you can just quickly draw a vertical line test. You don't even have to draw it. You can just kind of eyeball it and you can tell whether it's a function or not. Uh, equations are a little bit trickier because you need to know what they would look like. So with an equation, we need to have an idea of what the graph would look like in order to determine whether it's a function or not. So the equations you should be familiar with are linear, quadratic, and circles. So if I draw a line, a straight line, whether it's increasing or decreasing, it will pass the vertical line test. So if I draw a vertical line through a linear function, it is a function. So linear equations are always functions except for, remember those special types of linear equations? We had vertical and horizontal lines. So a horizontal line means that the slope was zero. That's because it has zero, if we think about rise over run, it has a zero rise. It does not go up and down, but it does have a run. So zero divided by any number is zero. This one had a slope that's undefined because if we look at rise over run, it has a rise, it goes up and down, but it does not have a run, so that is undefined. We can't divide by zero. So a horizontal line will pass the vertical line test. It will only pass through once, but a vertical line will not because every single x has the same y value. Or I should, should say that every y value has the same x for a vertical line. So we'll just put except when the line is a vertical line. Because for one value of x, there are infinite values for y. 
right? Because every y is the same. So there are infinite values for y. So that's the only exception with linear functions. Uh, quadratic functions. So we could have a concave up quadratic or a concave down. So this would be x squared. This would be negative x squared because it's concave down. So this is what you learned in grade 10. So quadratics will always pass the vertical line test. So quadratics are always functions. So if we had an equation where it's y equals x squared or some form of that, we know it's going to be a function because we know it's going to be a parabola and it will always pass the vertical line test. Now, someone might say, well, what if that parabola is sideways? Well, that's not a, this is not a quadratic. We're going to look at these later. This is a square root function. So we'll be looking at that a little bit later in this unit. So parabolas are always concave up or concave down. If it's sideways, it's not a parabola. It's not a quadratic, it's a square root. It's a completely different function. And it does not pass the vertical line test. Um, and then you also did circles, right, in grade 10. Circles are not functions because they don't pass the vertical line test. So circles are not functions. And if you remember the equation of a circle, the x and the y were both squared, and they would equal the radius squared. So that was a function that you looked at in a relation you looked at in grade 10. So those are the three that you should be familiar with, linear, quadratic, and circles. Um, linear, for the most part, are functions, except for vertical lines. Quadratics are always functions, and circles are not functions. And then we'll be looking at some other um, types of relations later on. So we'll be looking at square roots, we'll be looking at exponential, we'll be looking at rational.